on a Hairless Conquerors group, a guy asked a question and he tagged me. Is with Mr. Rolandes? Wait a minute! He said he went to a reputable hair transplant surgery in the UK to have a consultation. He's a diffuse thinner and it looks like he has a high Norwood level. Looks like Norwood 5 or 6. Why Norwood 5 or 6? Because if you look closer, the whole top is miniaturizing. And by the looks of the lateral humps, uh, it's likely that he's heading toward Norwood 6. He said he's a difficult case because he's a diffuse thinner and he still have a lot of hair that is actively miniaturizing. And the concern is that for each individual graft implanted, they will destroy native hair. And he said, all I'm confused is how people like Mr. Rolandas has clearly had two surgeries. How have they not destroyed the first transplant when adding hair? You know what? It's a good question. Well, it's true that uh, by doing the hair transplant in between native hair, there is a chance that you can possibly damage them. And essentially, this depends on case-by-case -case basis. And in most of the cases, doctors would actually recommend to uh, be on Finashit for at least uh, one year to strengthen this uh, miniaturized hair so they have a better chance of survival after the surgery. But the number one thing that determines whether or not your hair will be damaged is actual skill of the surgeon. And no, it's not all about DHI. You know, the usual marketing gimmick saying that with DHI, they can safely go in between the hair and not damage them. I'm pretty sure if you're gonna give a DHI pen to a monkey, it's probably gonna stab you. So you should definitely ask the doctor you're considering uh, whether or not he has uh, experience with diffuse thinners and ask for examples. You need to be objective when looking at such before and afters. How many grafts was transplanted? How many native hair was there? Did the person was on finasteride? Did the person just started finasteride after the surgery? Because if someone like him gonna receive 6,000 grafts, for, for example, in one surgery, it's gonna be pretty much impossible to determine whether his uh, native hair survived or not. 6,000 grafts is a lot of grafts, like, and I'm prime example of it. I had 6,540 grafts and I had much less hair than he does. So in short, if you're gonna go to a shit clinic or a doctor that does not have experience uh, with the fuse thinners, more likely than not, a lot of your miniaturized hair will just be destroyed. And knowing that we all have a very limited amount of hair follicles in our donor area to use for a hair transplant, you should be absolutely careful with each individual graft, treat it like a goal. So this is what I suggest. Get a finasteride if you're not already. Get a possibly on minoxidil as well if you're not already. Finasteride will treat your male pattern baldness so your hair loss will be under control while prolonging the anagen phase of your miniaturized thin hairs. And minoxidil will further enhance your anagen phase so the hair will be able to grow much longer than they are right now. This means hair follicles will be much stronger and ready to absorb all the transplanted trauma. So stay on the medication for at least six months, ideally one year. And listen, you never know, maybe you're gonna be a hyper you're gonna grow so much hair that you will even laugh about the possibility of getting a hair transplant. But if you've already been on medication for quite some time, looking at a hair transplant is a logical next step. This is indeed a very challenging case and the doctor have maneuver very carefully in between each individual hair. And believe it or not, they are able to implant really high density in between each, uh, each individual graft because during the surgery they are able to inflate your skull with specific type of liquid so it expands your skin which makes it easier to implant in between each individual graft. But again, like always, it all comes down to the research. Make sure to find a good doctor that knows what he's doing and has a proven track record of doing it. If this answered your question, make sure to press that like button for the algorithm. And if you're looking to educate yourself more on hair transplants and hair loss, make sure to subscribe to the channel. And this video here is gonna give you five steps how to find the best clinic or hair transplant for you. Don't screw this up.